Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, and thanks again for joining us on Celebrating Act Two. I'm John Coleman, and with me is Art Kirsch, my co-founder for Celebrating Act Two, and our guest, our special guest, is our regular entertainment a movie historian, author, guest speaker, Manny Pacheco. Manny, <laughs> good to see you. Great being here again. Uh, hi, hi, <laughs> Professor Manny. I, I must be doing something right. You keep inviting me back. <laughs> well, we don't have too many people that like us enough. <laughs> so but, you're it. <laughs> and also, also, we haven't figured out how to change our phone numbers. So oh. you, <laughs> you keep calling us. Cut it out. <laughs> But, yeah. as long, but as long as you have, uh, there are a lot of really great topics. Uh, uh, we recently had a conversation about uh, comedy teams, but um, we never got specific to uh, a favorite genre of mine, which are these screwball comedies. Uh, only, mostly a, a guy and a gal doing silly stuff together uh, and making light and jokes of it. Uh, is that, is that a, a genre that... Uh, you have has legs in your world, Dotton world. Absolutely, and and even, any time a genre can have a nickname like screwball, I, I think it has legs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but screwball comedy was born out of silent film. Obviously, silent film was a visual comedy a slapstick, and screwball comedy, which came right out of, into the talkie era, was uh, very very popular, especially during the pre code era b before the uh, the actual um, the Hayes Code would go into effect where they would uh, in implement censorship. But even after the Hayes Code, there were some wonderful slapstick pieces. Uh, bringing a Baby comes to mind. Uh, uh, My Man Godfrey is another. And I think Art had it right. I think what you do is you get a couple. Uh, usually it was a, believe it or not, th these comedies really were born out of a political statement. They really wanted to make fun of the upper middle class, maybe the upper class of, of folks, people who would lounge around in tuxedos in their home. And, uh, and they made fun of that class by doing outrageous things in the in the case of bringing a baby a baby leopard is involved with the fun uh in the case of my man godfrey we have a rich man who becomes uh, another rich couple's butler uh and it, that's a lot of fun and uh and it featured folks who were really really good at this genre of of comedy um uh catherine hepburn and william powell and particularly carol lombard and Cary Grant. They were absolutely wonderful together. But there were others, Irene Dunn, Robert Montgomery. They could dispense uh, their share of uh, screwball comedy. But there was something about Carol Lombard's uh, body, B-A-W-D-Y, body humor, and, um, and uh, Cary Grant's uh, emergence as a really terrific comedian. So uh, you had um, number that you met number of uh, teams that you mentioned there. Uh, you did mention Tracy and Hepburn, who may only be best known because their careers spanned primarily from talkies to the modern e era. They, they, they came from a forgotten era into a modern era. So they had a, something that much more, many more people. How do you well, rate them as a screwball comedy team? Well, they weren't. But really? let me just say, no, they weren't a comedy team at all. Uh, in fact, they made several wonderful dramas, uh, Keeper of the Flame and The Sea of Grass. Their comedy was based on a different uh, idea, and that is to write smart screenplays that would pit a man against a woman, and usually the woman came out on top. They were smart enough to uh, have as, as, as writers, among others, uh, Garson Kanan and Ruth Gordon. We all remember Ruth Gordon and Ru Rosemary's Baby and in Harold and Maude. But they uh, they were smart writers of the 19, uh, early 1940s, and they're different from the... They had elements of screwball. I mean, some wacky stuff happened. But they really were... were um, their humor was found in, in, in the witty banter between the two. And, and you could believe 
uh, the relationship between the you could never believe the, the the silly relationship between Cary Grant and and Catherine Hepburn in in the Philadelphia story or or maybe uh, bringing a baby but you could always believe in that that real um, conversational banter between Spencer Tracy and and Catherine Hepburn another couple that were really good at that uh, Myrna Loy and and William Powell and uh, of course they made 14 films together but six of those films were the Thin Man series and what they would do is they would tie a lot of comedy witty banter uh, around uh, a murder mystery and that was intelligent it was fun um, very little visual humor the, the really the wacky screwball elements came from their pet Asta and uh, other than that it was very what we call a sophisticated comedy so that's where that's from. So the the difference between the screwball and the sophisticated was not only the the basic premise of silliness, it was the dialogue, the witty dialogue, as opposed to the silliness. Right. And and you know one thing you mentioned, Art. I don't want to let this get by. Um, that that forgotten Hollywood you talk about, which is a wonderful brand name, by the way. I should have thought of it. Uh, <laughs> is actually, is actually Hollywood's golden. You thought age. of it twice for both of your books, yeah. <laughs> Hollywood's golden age. So it's, it's hardly forgotten. Just there are certain elements of of Hollywood's golden age that are rapidly becoming forgotten. Uh, but you know, even in later years, modern films would pay homage to the screwball comedy. One just comes to mind immediately and that was that wonderful piece done by Ryan O'Neill and Barbara Streisand what's up doc in the yes. 1970s that is an absolute tribute to the screwball comedy there's really nothing believable in the, in the piece itself except that they are absolutely uproariously funny and particularly in support the wonderful Madeline Kahn, who would have been magnificent in early 30s screwball comedies. She is particularly good. Now, by comparison, right around the same year, 1973, 74, Ryan O'Neill's making an, a sophisticated comedy with none other than his daughter, Tatum. And, and again, Madeline Kahn, who is very capable of doing sophisticated comedy as well as screwball in Paper Moon. Yes. So, yeah. I, there's a great example of how comedy can be different. One can be very visual, over the top, and the other can be smart and witty, and the humor is based in the conversational styles. Yeah, we, we uh, today, I think, of course, everything has trends, but today I think the trend, probably because of television, is more for um, a, a, a non-visual comedy. I think of Seinfeld. Yeah. Um, you know, Jerry Seinfeld came from stand-up comedy. Uh, Tim, um, what's his name, who did... Uh, Conway? Uh, n not Tim Conway, Tim... Um, Allen. Oh, forgive me. Tim Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, these guys came from stand-up comedy, which is all verbal comedy. Right. And so the sitcoms are, tend to be more verbal. Think back to Lucy. I uh, I Love Lucy, a lot That's, of physical comedy. Yeah, screwball comedy as opposed to... Screwball as comedy as from... Yeah, so these are... Well, yeah, these are traditions. Right. There's There's comedy traditions, I think, that will be picked up every so often by different people. Well, and, and, and I love Lucy, or, or, or the Honeymooners, for that matter, as opposed to, let's say, uh, uh, Cheers, Frasier, yeah. The Golden Girls, very yeah. sophisticated humor. Yeah, yeah. So, Interesting. Yes. And it all started, it all started in the late, what, early 30s. Early 30s, yeah. Early during the, yeah, during the pre-code era. But, you know, again, it's born out of the slapstick si a style of silent film. Yeah. So if, if you really want to say that, you know, that screwball element came came out of the, the, the silent. So, yeah. So, so Manny, put on, put on your, um, your deep, deep <laughs> thought process. And if you had to recommend, I'm going to make it easy on you. Ooh. Screwball comp that you think, well, if you had to put something on your bucket list, what would be the two screwball comics you would recommend people see so that they fully understand? Well, 
I would recommend, I, I mean, we, I, I've already mentioned, uh, you know, bringing up baby and, and my man Godfrey, but there's one with, uh, with Carol Lombard and John Barrymore, the 20th century, really good screwball comedy. Very, very, uh, very, very wonderfully done. And then of course, there's that wonderful Carol Lombard piece, uh, nothing sacred where she thinks she's going to die. So of course she goes off on a rendezvous of a trip that's sponsored by, um, that's sponsored by a newspaper and that leads to a lot of hijinks. So nothing sacred, the 20th century. Um, you know, I wouldn't rule out either, uh, um, 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 his girl Friday, smart, oh. Smart dialogue, uh, uh, wonder. It's a remake, actually, but it's smart dialogue. Cary Grant, Rosalind Russell, a lot of screwball elements to it. Yeah, and yeah. I think uh, it, it's really a wonderful piece. Uh, and and Howard Hawks' direction, by the way, which is magnificent. And one other film I'd like to recommend that kind of has some elements of screwball, but really uh, was very smartly written, and the dialogue is absolutely magnificent. So I think primarily it's a um, it's it's a sophisticated comedy, and that's uh, the Philadelphia Story, with. Mm. Uh, James Stewart, Cary Grant, and Katherine Hepburn. Wonderful, wonderful film. Those are those are the films I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. I have to, I have to admit that um, you know we first started talking in this segment about uh, changing a phone number. Back to you. Reason why we use the word hijinks. <laughs> Hi, hijinks. Okay. Well, I, I like to use hijinks so, and, other, and other shenanigans. Absolutely. Yeah, shenanigans. Hijinks wow. and shenanigans. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's enough hijinks and shenanigans for this trio for today. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Manny, um, I want to remind people to go to your website, which is. Well, hold on, hold on. Forgotten. If we're going to go to the website, then we need to yeah. get a lower third there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go to your close-ups where you can put the lower yeah. third on. www.forgottenhollywood.com, where they can read your blogs. You are a prolific uh, blogger and wonderful, wonderful stuff about Hollywood, uh, about history, about entertainment, um, and more. And and buy your books. The three. Yes. Two. It's uh, there's almost a third coming no, out. No, no, there is a Forgotten third. There's almost a fourth. <laughs> oh, a fourth. Me. I'm behind. Okay. Well, and I'm, I expect actually, to, I'm actually writing a fifth. So I'm, I expect I'm, to I see it. signed copies in my mailbox any day now. <laughs> and you can find them on Amazon for those who don't have a mailbox. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Manny, this has been great, as always. And as always, you've given me more topics to think about that we should talk about, one of which is Carol Lombard. I think I've only seen one Carol Lombard film. I'd love to see all of them. We should talk about her in detail. Yes, that'd be fun. But that's another that's another show. A tragic story, but but still yeah. a good story to tell. Yeah. Art, your turn to say goodbye. Uh goodbye, Art. <laughs> Bye, yeah. Manny. Thanks again. Bye bye. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.